potentially deadly situation forces one astronaut to cut his spacewalk by more than half at, by more than half after an equipment malfunction in outer space caused him to nearly drown inside of his own suit. It's an incredible story. Trace has more for it. Us on this in Los Angeles. Yeah, we all know, Mark, these spacewalks have become kind of routine when you're out there, but the bottom line is every astronaut knows when they step out of that capsule or space station that even the smallest nick in their spacesuit can mean instant death. This was an Italian astronaut. His name is Luca Parmitano, and he was on a six and a half hour spacewalk. He was about an hour and a half in when he felt water on the back of his hands and then on the back of his head, and the water was increasing. Listen to him now. Try to figure out what the problem is. Play this. I think it might not be the water bed. There's no other place for it to come. Unless it's sweat or urine. I guess it must be sweat then. Yeah. How much can I sweat though? My head is really wet. And I have a feeling that it's increasing. Uh, did he ever? About a gallon of water actually seeped inside his helmet. Still unclear if it came from his cooling system or from his drinking system, but as you might imagine, Martha, NASA wants to figure that out before they send somebody out outside again to have the same thing happen all wow. over again. In 1998, NASA claimed to have sent up their first piece of the ISS, International Space Station. They have been caught, however, time and again with air bubbles forming and floating off in their official outer space footage. Astronauts have also been caught using scuba space gear, kicking their legs to move, and astronaut Luca Parmitano even almost drowned when water started filling up his helmet while allegedly on a spacewalk. It is admitted that astronauts train for their spacewalks in underwater training facilities like NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab, but what is obvious from their space bubbles and other blunders is that all official spacewalk footage is also fake and filmed underwater. Analysis of many interior videos from the International Space Station have shown the use of camera tricks such as green screens, harnesses, and even wildly permed hair to achieve a zero-gravity type effect. Footage of astronauts seemingly floating in the zero-gravity of their space station is indistinguishable from Vomit Comet zero-g airplane footage. By flying parabolic maneuvers, this zero-g floating effect can be achieved over and over again, then edited together. For longer uncut shots, NASA has been caught using simple wires and green screens. There's this one video where the actor is going around a corner and he is faded out before making it completely out of the viewer's sight.
let's not forget space bubbles. Dave Williams about to move out of the Quest airlock. Uh, those particles that you see emanating from uh, the airlock is uh, said by the EVA officer, Paul Bame in Mission Control to be uh, particles of water from the crew's uh, sublevators on their spacesuits. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Oh, and it just happens that actors train in an underwater tank. <laughs> 